Today, we're gonna be extracting these studs out of my brother's stock headers. As you can see, it's like very stretched out and just not the best looking thread. Basically, what you need for this is a good pair of vice grips. This is like the medium size that you can get. There's also like a bigger size. Look at that. You need good like newer ones with sharp uh, teeth on it. You need like Dude, you need some sharp teeth. See how them are kind of, maybe, they're rounded. They're like mushed over. Well, that is gonna, that's, that's gonna suck because it's not gonna bite as well. So keep that in mind if you're using a super old pair of ice grips that are worn out, they're not gonna bite. Um, you also need a torch. This is just a basic like camping uh, thing of propane. Uh, just the basic like head, lighter, whatever. And we're gonna heat this up, this outside surface, because it'll, it'll expand the threads. And when the threads are expanded, it makes this easier to turn. So, also, I'm going to put coil on it. You can get this stuff off like Amazon, eBay, whatever. First things first, we need to put some oil on the back side. That's, that's plenty. Um, and the front side of these threads. That will soak in. A lot of you probably think I'm full of crap, but that gives it a chance to soak in. And when you heat up this outer, uh, the threaded part of this flange, it'll allow that oil to creep down in there. And when it does that, you clamp the vice grips on as tight as you can get. And then basically you just hit down with uh, like a hammer or mallet. I'll use a mallet so I don't tear my vice grips and you pay attention to the thread on the stud and you make sure it doesn't spin. Obviously these threads are shot and we're not gonna be using them so it doesn't matter if you clamp down on it. If you used a stud that you were gonna use again and put back in, you would just get two nuts, one there, one there, and you would tighten one, loosen the other, go against one another, and then try to use that as like your point of uh, you would just use that to grab onto it. Try not to hit that stud too much, because that will grow as well, and you'll be in the same boat you're in right now. So heat up that. Try to heat up that. I just painted this too, so hopefully it doesn't wreck my paint. Alright, so we're not moving. Oh shoot, it's moving. Yes! Dude, this thing is bad. So that doesn't look that bad. You gotta heat the crap out of this, dude. Like a lot. And it'll expand them threads, and then you can get that stud out. And these are 10 by 1.5. I got a 10 by 1.5 tap that I'm gonna run through, just like I did this one. And it will clean up the threads enough to where you can easily screw in. Ah, that's kinda hot. It, you can screw in a screw, and mount your flange on. So here we have a, I think this is a good tap, OSG, 10 by 1.5, this is the machine tap. Definitely want to use oil, because that's just what we do. And this will most likely thread in, and then just, yeah, right there, start getting hard. And if my compressor had air in it, I would blow this out, so just do one of them and your 10 by 1.5 by 25 socket head cap screw will screw right in. Boom. Thread comes all the way to the back side and we're mounted. I'm definitely gonna use anti-seas, anti-seas, whatever you want, copper, the aluminum uh, style, the gray stuff. Uh, that is freaking awesome because it leaves a film on your bolt and even though it's in a header it doesn't burn off because i don't know which one's higher the copper or the gray but dude it lasts it's it's like basically aluminum or copper like shavings on your thread which allows it to come back off and on a lot of other exhausts on my van i used brass nuts it's uh eight mil brass nuts with a super high quality bolt you got to use a good quality bolt. This is a 12.9, which is the strongest one you can buy. 
and it just it holds up the longest because it's the best grade of fastener whatever you're using and the brass has a natural oil uh, what do you call it it's just it's it has oil in it so use a brass nut if you can may master cars where you get that crap I'm gonna do this one and then this header will be complete so this side does not want to come out especially that one so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill in the center of this stud and that will kind of relieve uh, the pressure so I'm gonna center punch this with my little center punch and I'm gonna get right in the center of that hole drill this center of the stud out all right guys so I drill just a little bit and I got a very good center on that that I'm feeling real good about so I'm gonna drill down Oh, did you hear it? I heard a crack loose right there. And you can see, yes! You can see the stud and my mark moving. What I did here was drill out the center of this, which relieves some pressure off of the outside of this bolt because it gets so thin It'll just, it'll mush in a little bit and it'll just kind of give. So that's one trick you can do. You just got to get a very good center, which usually you can get that with one of these uh, center punches, which you can get off eBay for like extremely cheap. Or you can get, the best one I came across was a stare at one. It'll be like 40 bucks. But this is a good example of how to get a stud out that doesn't want to come out. Now, this is the one, clearly because you can't get behind it. But that is the one that I'm kind of worried about that, dude, that's gonna be the one that messes me up. All right guys, so I got the other one out. It wasn't that big of a deal, but this one, which is the one I can't get behind, I cannot get out and it's not one to come out. So I figured I would tap on it and that would maybe break up some of the rust and try to assist me breaking the threads loose. I used to work in a machine shop and we assembled lights, LED lights. Ugh. And people would break off bolts all the time, so I got a lot of practice. Oh, dude, that helped a ton. Holy crap. That thing did not move before. So that's another thing you can do with studs is if you can't get one out, hit on it, or a bolt or anything, you gotta hit on it. And it kinda shocks it. And it gets the vibrations in there and it breaks the thread from the hole. And you can get out your stud and go on with your day. Also heat, and also drilling out the back side of it if you can, front side of it can too so if you were to break a bolt off in threads like this and you just tighten it up too much and you basically rip the head off of these threads you most likely can get it out because the threads are not mangled the threads are just there and the only thing that holds a bolt tight is the head on the flange and then the threads it just it pulls it apart and that's what holds it tight so if you get rid of the head then the threads will just most likely come right out so for this example the threads were fine, but that little unthreaded portion, they probably snugged up against this flange just to kind of hold them in there. So I was fighting basically the rust on the threads, which is why I was able to get all of these out, especially with heat. And I did have to drill the back side of one of these out to relieve some of the pressure on the threads. But if you cross thread something and you snap the head off and it's frozen inside of there and the threads are what's causing the resistance, then you're most likely not gonna be able to get it out because it's in here that's messed up and not just the head of the bolt holding it on. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I was able to get all these out. All right, I'm gonna run a tap through these and call it good. <laughs> 